completely factor it. So let's start. Two minutes. It's in descending order already. You cannot divide if it's an expression. You can only divide both sides of an equation. But this is an expression, there is no right hand side. All factors have to stay. We need more time. Is that a yes? Anyone get us started? Say anything? So what do we do with x squared plus 4x plus 3? Um, will give us... No, that's the sum. That's not the product. Correct. Correct. So what do I write? Yes, so just tell me what to write. Excellent. Good. Anything else? What else would you like me to look at? As I said, we finished the book, so I'll do whatever you want me to. Anything you worked on? Anything you have questions on? I don't really understand the word okay, let's look at word problems. The flag, so 61 on page 435. A flag for a local organization is in the shape of a rectangle. whose length is 15 inches less than twice the width. The length is 15 inches less than twice the width. The length is 15 inches less than twice the width. 
So the length is, the length is means L is 15 less than twice the length. Perfect. Uh, if the area of the flag is 500 squared inches, what does that mean? If the area is 500 squared inches, how do I express that? Very good. Excellent. Um, find the dimensions of the flag. What will I do? Exactly, use substitution and replace L. So this is x, 2x minus 15 equals 500. Good. What now? Excellent. 2x squared minus 15x, and then? Very good. Excellent. Now, this is an equation. And if I can simplify it, I would definitely will. Can I simplify it? Uh, 15 is now divisible by 2, so I'm stuck. I can't. It's a what? What is this? It's a trinomial. It's in descending order. No greatest common factor, no negative leading coefficient, no special product, and one is not the leading coefficient. I'm down to the very last option I have. What is the last option I have for trinomials? So I need to find two numbers whose product is? Yes, but negative. Yes, negative 1,000, and whose sum is? Careful negative 15. Well, a thousand is a big number, but I know it's 10 times 10 times, times 10, right? 10 times 10 times 10. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Which means 2 times 2 times 2 times 5 times 5 times 5. 10, 10, 10. So I need from here to find two numbers whose sum will be negative 15. So is this called factor of Not yet. But yes, I'm getting there. No, because I'm still confused but when you take so if you can't find a common factor to go into all three, that's when you, if it has a D D don't coefficient. Other than number, one. Other than one. Then that's when you take the two the first number and multiply the okay. Good. So I need two numbers, one positive, one negative using all these factors, but I have to come up with only two numbers using all of them. Just two numbers whose sum is negative 15. Don't write anything. Negative 10 and negative 5. Is the product a th negative 1,000? No. How much is this? Uh, two times two times two is eight. Five times eight is forty. And this is five times five, twenty-five. So which one is positive, which one is negative to get a negative fifteen? Correct. So then I will rewrite two x squared minus forty x plus twenty-five x minus 500 equals 0. From the first two, perfect. Careful.
but then 2 times 40 will not be 40. Good. So what from the other two? She's here. Hi. Sign and number, or sign and factor, I should say. Good. What comes out? Oh, I'm sorry. See? Supposed to write x minus 20, and I didn't. So the common factor is x minus 20, and in parentheses, so there are two options, <clears throat> x equals and x equals. Very good, which is not acceptable, why? Because we are talking about inches, excellent. And the other option is, very good, 20 inches. So we go back. If x is 20 inches, how much is the length? Two times 20 is 40, 40 minus 15 is 25. We have to go back and check in both equations, as we always do. 20 times 25, is that 500? Yes. And this is what we just determined. So is 25 to 40 minus 15? Yes. So now I know that the length of the flag is 25 inches and the width of the flag is 20. Is this better? OK. Anything else? What else would you like us to go to? OK. An architect squaring instrument is in the shape of a right triangle. Find the length of the longer, longer leg of the right triangle if the hypotenuse is 8. Oh, 2 centimeters. A long, oh, no, no, I'm sorry, I didn't read. Uh, if the hypotenuse is 8 centimeters longer than the longer leg, and the shorter leg is 8 centimeters shorter than the longer leg. So right here, let's say, OK, this is the hypotenuse. Which one of these two we wanted it to be longer? In my, in my drawing, this is longer. So I'm going to call it x. And this is y. So x, longest leg. And y, shortest leg. And now let's read the problem one more time. Find the length of the longer leg. So we are find, we're finding x. So the question is, how much is x? If the hypotenuse is the hypotenuse is 8 centimeters longer than the longer leg. How do I write that? The hypotenuse is 8 centimeters longer than the longest leg. Thank you very much. Now the second one. Uh, the shorter leg is 8 centimeters shorter than the longer leg. The shortest leg. Y equals x minus, or eight minus x. Is eight centimeters shorter than the longer leg. So the shortest leg is an eight centimeters shorter than the longer leg. So indeed, x minus eight. Would you agree? And we are asked to find. We're asked to find the longer leg. Good. Very good. So what do we know what happens in a right triangle? 
there is something very, very popular that we can apply in a right triangle. What is it? The Pythagorean theorem. So how do I write it? Based on the letters I have. I have to use the letters I have now. Say it again. That's it. Perfect. So now x is x. What do I replace y by? And I have to square it. Very good. x minus 8, everything squared, equals. What do I replace h by? And I square it. This is the intermediate step. Do we understand the intermediate step? Good. What next? What do you recommend we do? X squared is x squared plus. We know from chapter 5 how to square x minus 8. Stay away from foiling. I recommend. How many terms will you write? Very good. A binomial squared is a trinomial. Excellent. Plus, first term squared minus 2 times the first times the second. Plus, the second term squared equals. The right hand side, how many terms will you write? Good. I'm ready when you are. Good. Very good. Now, I see a 64 on one side and I see a 64 on the other. I see an x squared on one side and I see an x squared on the other. Once I subtract x squared from both sides, these will be gone. Once I subtract 64 from both sides, these two will be, will be gone. What am I left with? Negative 16. I have an x squared. Oh. I have a negative 16x, and I'm bringing over another negative 16x. So x squared, negative 32x equals. Excellent. I look at the left-hand side. I see a binomial. It's in descending order, greatest common factor. Very good. What is left in parentheses? So then we have two options for the longest leg. And we see which one we accept, or maybe both. What is the first option? Can the longest leg of a right triangle be zero centimeters? No. What is the other option? If x is 32, how much is y? Thirty-two minus eight, twenty-four. How much is h? Which is the hypotenuse? If x is 32, good. How do I check this 32, 24, and 40? How do I check and make sure that this is true? What should the relationship between x, y, and, Z, and h be? How do I check my answer? Very good. So just give me with the numbers. plus squared equals, we have to check. So please square 32, please square 24, add them up and see if you get 40 times 40, which is 1,600. If 32 squared plus 24 squared is 1,600, then we're in business. All these numbers are correct. 
If 32 squared plus 24 squared does not equal 1,600, then we are in trouble. Nobody wants to calculate that? Just to make sure, we have to make sure. Is it? Is 32 squared plus 24 squared 1,600? Good. So then the length and the width and the hypotenuse work, and that's the only answer possible. Good. Anything else? Page? 56. Write a quadratic equation that has the two solutions, 4 and 5. So I have a quadratic equation that has the solutions x equals 4 and x equals 5. Can anyone build that equation for us? I'm going backwards. So the solutions are 4 and 5. And I want to go back. Correct. x minus 4, x minus 5. And now I have to distribute. And when you distribute, what do you get? Minus 5x minus 4x. And then plus. This is the equation that has these two solutions. We went backwards. Very good. Anything else? I uh, this was number 56. 58. The area of the rectangle is 80 squared meters. Uh, the length is one more than three times the width. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. So the area of a rectangle is 80 squared meters. So this is the rectangle. I have x and y, so then the area is, I'm told, 80 square meters. What do I write? X times y. Very good. Um, the length is one more than three times the width. The length is one more than three times the width. Well, what equals? So one more time. The length. I have to write the length. Right. What is the length? Three times the width minus one. So the length is. I have to write the length from this picture. No, I have to write the length. What is the length? Right, exactly. Excellent. So I have to convert a sentence into an equation. And it says, the length is, I have to write y equals. And then it says, three, one more than three times the width. Perfect. Find the dimensions of the rectangle. Two minutes. We just solved one like this.
can anyone dictate the next step or just tell us what to do? Excellent. So how do I rewrite the first equation? Excellent. Very good. Can anyone dictate the next step? Very good. So then Three and eighty, negative eighty. So the product is negative two forty, and the sum of the product, and the sum is one. Good. So let's try. Two forty is a big number. So I highly recommend breaking it up into prime numbers. So 240 is, first of all, 24 times 10 if you want to do that. Then it's 6 times 4, which is 2 times 5. And this is 2 times 3, and this is 2 times 2. So this is 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 5. 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 5. So now I need to find two numbers. that are so close, one positive and one negative, but so close that their sum is 1. And 15, very good. Exactly. Very good. 16 and 15. So then the new equation is 3x squared. Can anyone dictate? Excellent. Very good. You just gave me 16 and 15, right? I have to use them to get the 1. No, the product is negative. One must be positive and one must be negative. When I add 16 oh. to 15, I don't get 1. Okay. I didn't like that. That's okay. So then now, what happens next? What do I factor out? Good. What is left? Good. What do I get from the other two? Now I'm going to look, sign and factor. Yes? 15 times 3 will not be 15. 5. Good. What, is, what comes out? What is the fact? Correct. And in parentheses? So there, that means that there are two options for x. First option. Very good. And uh, it's meters. Negative, I move it to the other. Yes. Negative 16 fifth meters, which is not acceptable. So now, if x is 5, how much is y? If x is 5, how much is y? 
16. Good. So y equals 16 meters when x equals 5 meters. Is the product 80? 5 times 80 times 16, is that 80? Because if it's not, then something is wrong. Is 5 times 16 80? Yes. Good. So then I know, I look uh, and I see 5 uh, times 16 is question or part D, or answer D. Anything else? What else would you like to go over? Again, just working on your homework and nothing else is not going to be enough. You know that. 48. You said 48? 48, which is 3x minus 1, and 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. We're asked to solve the equation, of course. How do we do this? Say it again. Good, but I, I, I can already write two options, right? This is the first option, which gives us one third. And this is the second option, which will be 9x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. And yes, now I have to factor 9x squared minus 6x plus 1. How do I factor 9x squared minus 6x plus 1? No, because I have three terms. I cannot take out 3. 3 is not a common factor to all 3. I cannot pull out x because the x is not common to all 3 terms. Say it again. No. It's not going to happen. No, because this is a special product. And I said, remember, if you skip a step, you make your life more difficult. So this is a special product. What would you change this into? There are only two special there are only yeah there are only two special products for trinomials. This is a perfect square, this is a perfect square. So what do you expect to get? The first term squared is this, minus 2 times the first times the second is this, plus the second term squared is that. That's why not foiling these in chapter 5 is extremely useful. So then there are two options from here, but they are both the same. What are those options, or what is the option? One third indeed. Move 1, divide by 3. Very good. So it turns out that this equation has three solutions. They're all the same, one third. Anything else? 52? 52. 6x squared minus 3x plus 8 equals 0. Okay, any suggestions here? Suggestions? Um, what? Yes? You need to find two numbers that equal 48 and negative, and whose sum is uh, negative 3. Very good. 48 again is a big number. So 48 is 6 times 8, 2, 3, and 2, 2, and 2. 
So two, 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 and three. Since the product is positive, the numbers I'm looking for must have the same sign, either both positive or both negative. However, their sum is negative. Can I find two numbers who are negative, who add up to negative 3, but their product is 48? Are there two negative numbers that I add up and get negative 3, but when I multiply them, I get 48? What do you think? No. It's not factorable. You can't solve it. We don't know other methods as of now. Good. Anything else? Say it again. Sum of squares has only two terms. It's a binomial. Yes. Okay, what was wrong with 37? So 54 minus 2x cubed y cubed. So this is 37. Good. What will you do first? Right. I will rearrange it. And what would you write? Very good. Excellent. What next? Good. So can anyone else help? Very good. What is left in parentheses? X cubed. Y cubed minus 27. Good. So now let's look at x cubed, y cubed minus 27, and let's decide what to do with it. It's a binomial, and we have four special products for binomials. Which one will you try? Um, the Wonderful. Once you say the difference of cubes, then you have to come up with a a a binomial and a trinomial. Good. So please give me the binomial. Very good. XY minus 3. Now let's determine the trinomial, please. Yes? Good. No, there is never minus on the last term. Plus 9 indeed. Very good. Good. Anything else? I'm sorry? Multiply it and you'll get the starting point. Yes, that is the answer. So in the sum of squares, sum of cubes, yes. If I had, yes. Three, three cubed is 27. This cubed is that. This cubed is this. This cubed is this. So then the sum will be a plus b, a squared minus a b, plus b squared. So the sequence of sign is plus, plus, minus. We never even talk about the last one. Plus, plus in the middle, minus, or minus, minus in the middle, plus. Very good. Anything else? Uh, say it again. I'm trying to get that. Um, 
Thank you. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anything else, please? Are the problems that you would like to go over? Chapter you know, 40. Yes. Uh, same page? Yes, ma'am. Of course. So x to the fourth plus 16. So what can you say about that? But then is x squared square plus 4 to the second power, which has three terms? So if I write x squared plus 4 everything squared, I get three terms. No, I didn't say Okay. So it's three terms, and this is, I don't only have two terms. So it's not factorable. Not factorable because it's the sum of squares. So not factorable. You cannot write x squared plus 4 squared because that would be x to the fourth plus 8x squared plus 16. And you don't have 8x squared on the left. Remember, a binomial squared is three terms. If you start with two terms, you cannot equal it to a, with a binomial squared. Good. Anything else? Any questions on chapter 5? Any questions on chapter 6? Is there any particular type of problem that you would like to go back to? Sure, just find one. Just find one. 